Hey guys, welcome to a brand new episode of Harry Potter Wizards Unite, where every week we'll be discussing any updates that we get on the game leading up to it is now 2019, whenever it's released, best guess, March 2019, um, but we'll be discussing any updates that we get, any extra information, and also doing any theories on what we think the game will look like. Today we will be talking about what Harry Potter Wizards Unite can learn from other AR mobile games that have been released. So we'll be going through Pokemon Go, Ingress, as you can see on the screen, Ghostbusters, Clash and Go, Jurassic World Live, Our World, and Draconius Go. Talking about features from them, which I think the game will learn a lot from if they implement them, and whilst also talking about what not to put in and talk about why some of these games didn't take off as well as Pokemon Go and what potentially Harry Potter Wizards Unite can do to avoid that. Okay, let's get into it. So, first of all, let's talk about the big kind of main, you know, from Niantic as well. Harry Potter Wizards Unite will be uh, developed with, with help from Niantic and this game has obviously reached probably the highest success in terms of AI. It was the first of its kind. Ingress had, Ingress had an AR element in it, but it didn't have the complexity and that, that, you know, IP of Pokemon. Pokemon is one of the biggest franchises in the world. Harry Potter was his unite. Harry Potter is, is actually below uh, Pokemon. I think it's because of its, you know, Asia. Is, is huge over there um, and Harry Potter isn't as much so there we're gonna see that it's not as popular as it across the world so how is it gonna reach the same heights of that and I think that's gonna be in the quality of the game so from what we know already is you know from some of the trailers we know we're gonna be part of a statute of secrecy task force aimed at preventing muggles from discovering magical objects artifacts spells creatures what we know already is artifacts, so we've seen a snitch and a Nimbus 2000, Nimbus 2000, and so we've seen those magical artifacts, we haven't yet seen any creatures, except there was a code hidden in the second one, which referred to, if you put it into Google Maps, located it in Tibet. Now, in Tibet, there are yetis, and yetis were featuring in Harry Potter Wizards Unite, and Niantic put out a tweet um, in another related, you know, just, it wasn't related to Harry Potter Wizards Unite specifically, but it was related to AR gaming and developing. Uh, so it may be that we also, there was a little sneak peek into the fact that there will be creatures. I think there will be. Um, but what can it learn from one of the biggest, you know, creatures game, which is Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go came out and you had your Kanto region. I think most people, the nostalgia was with Kanto. I personally started to like fade my, you know, fandom for it past Johto and coming into the Hoenn region. But that was big enough to make me get well into this game and you know, I, I pretty much caught everything I could other than the region specific. I actually gave it up like a year ago, stopped playing it, and I've just started playing it now because I want to get to level 40 um, just in case we get beta access uh, for Wizards Unite. They might give level 40 priority just in case I'm going to do that. So for me, the collecting element, you know, there is something inherent in all of us, I think, that we like collecting things, stamps, be it, you know, memorabilia. We all have a little element, I think, that enjoys catching some type of, you know, anything. And Pokemon Go really captures that, where, you know, with the phrase, got to catch them all. And that was really my mission. It wasn't about, you know, be the strongest be the, you know, the, the person who can be everybody else's Pokemon, have the most of a strong type. It was about, for me, it was about collecting them all. And that was that was great. That was the big fun, the, the fact they had rarity. You had to go out to get these things. They're not things you can just get from your living room. Pokemon Go really, really pushes the getting out bit. Within this region where I am stood now, right, I have access to one spawn point, and that's an Abra. Now around me, you can see there is nothing. Oh, I have two spawn points. Two, two spawn points. There's some going there as well. So nothing around me. I have to go out and walk if I want to catch Pokemon. 
The radar for me, they later improved, but it's still not good enough. You know, I, I don't know how I'm going to... I'm going to have to walk around a lot. But though I don't know. Is it good enough or is it that, you know, it just that means I'm going to have to go out and work for it and walk around. I think there is that element. And you don't want to make it too easy. The fact that they added, you know, stops which you could go to and they had give you give you give you a better radar of that it helped um but in the rural element where i you know being here i'm more interested in the sightings because that's my one poker stop within range and yeah i'm gonna have to go out and walk to do that so i think they push the ar up but you really do have to get out from your single spot whereas you know we'll come to some of the other games and that isn't the case there's a lot you can do from where you're standing they, you know, it, it fosters walking only really because of the speed limit. It's not built for cars. You know, if you're going 30 miles per hour, which is pretty much the average in the UK, you're not going to catch anything. You might, you know, when you're stopping, be able to catch something. But it's got to be played walking. And I think if you're going to build an AR game, it does have to be built like that. It cannot be built too much on, okay, I have to, I can play from here. Because I think if you do that, most people will just sit and play and in, inside where it's warm and going out there builds that you get a lot of experiences for me the best moments i had with pokemon go was my experiences of going out going out at like a late at night and searching walking around the back of some random warehouse and then i actually got stopped by the police saying what are you doing and there'd actually been a robbery there that night and i was just like I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm, I'm playing Pokemon, <laughs> and he was like, "Yeah, that I I I know you're not burgling this place because nobody would admit that at your age." <laughs> and I was like, "Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, thank you, bye." I got that Pokemon. So that was kind of the, the biggest element I think of getting out is builds memories. The community aspect is good because you know in the first couple of weeks it was amazing. You go out one spot and you you see somebody at Poke Spot and you don't know they were playing if you see them starting to do that or that. Um, so that was the big element. I think the community aspect they've really built on. The fact that they've got the friends at system is a great way to, you know, give people extra resources and reward you for being friends with people and, you know, sharing with people. Whilst not being too heavily weighted in the fact that, you know, you can't gain everything from that. One of my favourite aspects of Pokemon Go, and it is, you know, one of the most difficult sometimes in terms of the monetary aspect is is incubators walking eggs for me it just really encourages you to have to get out and walk and you know i would pay loads for incubators that's the only problem for me is that all right you got one free incubator but it wasn't really enough because you've got eight other slots and therefore you're spending 150 on an incubator or 200 in a super incubator which you know if you're going to fill up with eight you're going to be spending like 10 quid to be able to do that and that's that's expensive but you're not buying specific pokemon you're not buying it and guaranteed to get everything you need uh and along the road to you know if you're level one to 25 you get so many rewards in terms of incubators that doesn't really matter and my problem with that was that you know you get to level 38 which is a huge achievement and you get rewarded worse rewards than you got at level five for me it just wasn't it doesn't make sense to reward people less the further they go and i think that's where they realized that and then they built in field research and special tasks which do reward you for doing certain tasks. And I think you've got to keep that element. A lot of games make this sense of like, you've got to build your quests. You you, you get these, you know, complete these tasks of, you know, spin 100 poke stops. You get to 100 and, and there's nothing after it. Well, you need something like element like it restarting. That would be cool because then you get those rewards again and you're motivated to, you know, push through the really hard bit where you've got to gain 5 million experience and to get there. So for me, this was a great addition because it compensated for that a little bit more, gave you rewards that you could then use. I think the um, the, the, the things they have, the events that they have on during winter time and other special events are great because you know they just encourage you to play a little bit more. The fact that you have a buddy element it was really, really good. The fact that you can individualize your character. 
the added rewards of like bonuses of how much you walk in the work week really rewarding that walking element and i think pokemon go over all the games that we're kind of going to go through have the best balance in terms of for a good ar game not a game that you can play from home an ar game and the raiding aspect raids good Good special way of getting Pokemon, but the problem is, you know, if you are in rural and you don't know many people who are playing, it does isolate you a little bit from being able to get those those Pokemon. But you do have those, you know, field research rewards where I'm getting them now, which is quite nice. The battling element, very, you know, it's not that complex. Pretty poor, I think, being that they've had two years to work on this, is it? Uh, I think they could have done a lot better, but I do think they have this element of, like, they're not going to make it like Pokemon other like Pokemon Red or any of them to to make it as complex because it might compete with that game then. Uh, so I think it's good, but it's, it's it's definitely far off from a really good experience, battling experience. And so that's kind of like my rundown of Pokemon Go. I think it just has a lot of good aspects to it that push the AR element. So let's go into something very similar. Draconius Go, basically a copy of Pokemon Go, but you know one of the biggest selling points of this was that it would be everything Pokemon Go was and had promised and the community was asking for it would give and As you can see that the first aspect here is Pokestops that rural basis versus um, City City has a huge bonus upon anybody who's rural because it's, all the like spawn locations are based on mobile data. So if loads of people are using your mobile phones, you'll see a lot more spawns within that area and you will see a lot more Pokestops if there are things of you know points of interest. In a rural place like me, a point of interest is a sculpture that is for a giant work estate, working estate that um, you're not going to see anything else other than that one sculpture uh, and it was a push at that so, ooh, new creature <laughs> so I haven't played this in a year as well uh, but I really enjoyed this once it came out so obviously the first bonus of this and what they did right was I think they balanced the city versus rural and I think Wizards Unite is going to have to do that if it wants a customer base across the board not just people who are in cities you're going to have to balance that. Now, as far as I know, I have feel I, I remember hearing something that points of interest that are in Pokemon Go will be used within Wizards Unite. Whether they're going to add more for a rural element, I don't know. They have to, in my opinion. It's just, it, it, it really isolates a lot of people who want to play but have to walk 20 minutes to get to one Pokestop when somebody has just walked 20 minutes through 100 Pokestops and got way more spawns along the way. So they have to correct that. The way Draconius Go did this is they made it so that everything was random. You know, these points of interest were randomized. As you can see, we've got this, you know, no roads. These are all paths because they're thinner roads. And we've got loads of stops there. So something that you'll never access. And then you've got ones actually on the road that are well within access. So for me, that was one of the best things that they did and that Wizards Unite is going to have to correct, in my opinion, to keep people from feeling like they've got an equal chance. Now, Draconius Go added a lot of extra, extra uh, parts to it. So we've got the creature elements, the nearby list was very similar. Um, but you could do things like that gave it that extra bit. So what I'm talking about is it already had PvP when it came out. It um, had built a lot of other things like ratings, so where you rate in the world, which is quite nice, and also can if you make it local. You've got a stadium, which you can build to hold your own competitions. They had quests. Now, this quest was in before Pokemon Go had their quest system. And so you'd pick up a quest each day and you could complete it and you'd get rewards in the form of uh, runes and uh, spells. So spells, as we'll come to in a minute, are one of the best features, in my opinion, within this. Um, so within this game, you've got all those features. The main one is that you had these magic. So you get you capture runes through random encounters. So you get about two random encounters. So it doesn't matter where you are, it'll spawn from your location. And 
you'll get an encounter with a wild creature. You battle that and with it you can win runes. Now with these runes you can then cast spells. So as you can see, now you earn recipes as you go along. So the more you play, the more stops you pick up, you have chances of picking recipes. The more you, there are certain quests that can deliver you some of these recipes. And with them, you can do a lot of nice features. So long hands will increase your vision range for objects by 25%. So if you're ever like short of, a, of a, a Pokemon or a creature, you can cast that to potentially increase the range for seven days, but it lasts a long time. And you, you, you find yourself getting things that you wouldn't have previously been able to get. They have the Gift of the Golden Dragon, which can double pillars, so rewards from it. Field of Abundance creates a field of pillars or a field of Pokestops around you. And all these features make it a lot more playable for people who are in rural areas. But also, if you if you kind of just, for the moments so you're not outside, you can um, cast spells and, you know, look, cast some fields and attach lures onto them. So for me, that aspect is probably the best part in the game, other than one other thing, it is, in my opinion, the best, the hunt. So every week you get to participate in a golden egg hunt. And the way this works is you will be given a map fragment for every time you collect one from, so this is the, the fight, by the way. So each week, if I remember, Morgoth is stronger than <laughs> Aramasp. So they have types. It was, it's basically just like Pokemon Go in terms of I've got I'll do strong hits against this Aramasp, and it's the same dodging shoot elements. They didn't improve the the battling system at all. Um, whilst we're on that, I think the battling system and the way you capture creatures was not too complex in Pokemon Go, but it was still had enough complexity to it that it meant you could, you know, not, you could make excellent throws and increase your chance of collecting things. You can do curveballs. There are different ranges for different Pokemon and they move in different ways. And I think that's a really nice aspect to have. One of the things I'm concerned about in Harry Potter Wizards Unite is that they might, they might use gestures so as we can see up here on the board what it has is the gestures for each spell so a swishing a flick for Wingardium Leviosa now that's not going to be complex in Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery those movements they're not that difficult to get you pretty much pass them every time and I don't think that's going to be interesting enough to make people want to keep doing that to catch creatures um, it's been used actually, I haven't put another game in here, which is it's Magus, Mag Magus. So this game used those gestures and that didn't take off successfully enough. Um, it was, didn't have a, a, a unique, you know, fan base like Harry Potter was Unite, Harry Potter, but like it, it didn't take off. So as you can see there, I've got some runes which I can then use and gather to cast spells. The, some runes are rarer and those you can usually cast better spells. So yeah, going into map. You capture a fragment from each of these towers, these pink towers, and starting from wherever the first one in, with like within like a mile or two miles range, anywhere in, within that, you will get given a map segment of nine spots. So you earn one, then another one, and then another one, and you've got to work out where that is based on, you know, you can look at Google Maps or Open Street Maps was the best one for that. And when you've got all nine, or even before that, if you've predicted, you can use shovels. So these shovels you can purchase, but you can also get them as rewards for leveling up. Um, but with them, I could actually buy some with my money. You can see shovels. With that, you can dig on one fragment, and it'll tell you if you've hit the treasure. Then you've got to go to the next one. And it's a big walk. This really forces you to go out and walk and you dig again and you might miss it. Then you go out again and you dig and if you hit it, you get a golden egg and within that it gives you a chance of hatching, you know, like an Entei type Pokemon in terms of rarity. So something really rare and powerful. You get, only get to do it once a week and it forces you into, I've had some of my best experiences playing that. You know, I've been on fields chased by cows because it puts you in some random places and it really makes you learn your area, go places you never would have been before. And that's kind of creating experience for me that 
that really made the game. So I, I enjoyed playing this in, in start a lot more than I did Pokemon Go because it had that element. Another element are these. So these are Dragon Eye sites which you can purchase uh, and get rewards for. So you can get them randomly. So you can get them from Pokestops. So it's not something you have to buy. And if I cast this now, this means that I can then see everything within my range and I can then capture it. And also it has these elements of treasure chests. So you can pick them and you get rewards within them. You can actually get Dragon's Eyesight from them, but usually you get runes. Still very, very buggy. <laughs> so there you can see I've got a, um, a spell that does certain things. You can see some of the creatures in the distance. See so if you can get them. So it increases your range. And it means that if the Pokemon stops um, out of... If, if the Pokemon is not accessible, but you would be able to... Um, be, 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 like it's because it, on a building estate or something and you can't gain access, you can cast one of those and catch it. So you don't miss out on it. And that's to kind of accommodate for the fact that obviously it's random placings and there will be Pokemon in places that are out of reach within stadiums where it'd be ridiculous to go and, and, and try and try and get it. So it, it made, you know, that element of it accounting for the fact that it's random within the rural element as well. And it means you can play from home. Uh, they're rare, so you're not going to be able to do it all the time. And so it wasn't too much of a bonus that you could just keep casting it. Uh, but that was like one of the one of my favorite features within it as well that just allowed you to play once you've got back especially in the fact that you'd go out and you know poke stops you could find one randomly you could have a day out and then use your dragon dragon's eye when you got back so it rewarded you for getting out and playing and it didn't you know balance nicely not too heavily weighted on being stuck in one position so I think this game had some really good features I think the the almost like geocaching quest hunt is a feature that would suit Wizards Unite so well. I can imagine you going out and finding magical artifacts or even within that element, instead of a golden egg, finding a chamber of secrets or some hidden vault, cursed vaults. And then once you're there, you have to do certain things or challenges. That for me would just buy blow my mind and take this game into what it needs to be, I believe. It needs to be something that is active, modern, not something we've seen before, you know, that using that, some of the technology, if you haven't seen the Wizards, uh, you know, the, the new technology that Niantic are using and probably implementing within this game um, and have shown on their site. So if they use some of that tech and thinking the one way, like you move, you solve puzzles as a team as well, I think that would be amazing and would just, that's, that, that's how, what I want to see in the game. Quests are a must balanced you know rewards within this it had i think it had the similar rewards in terms of the more you level up the rewards that you get um but i think it also had a lot of aspects that you know made it a lot better than pokemon go because it really listened you could also post like lures on some of these so you could uh and you could quest enchantments so enchantments you know, give you more of one type. So within your local area, you could have like, you could, I could put a lure of creature eggs and I would get, you know, for me it was that one and I'd get more, I'd only get eggs from it rather than anything else. So another kind of aspect which I like, you get these bonuses, which mean you receive um, an extra two numbers of items from every pillar. I think this was probably one of my more enjoyed because it had a strong AR element. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go into one more thing, which is going to be, you know, talking about a game that did have an AR element and an at-home element, and that's Clash and Go. And in another episode, probably next week or the following week, depending on what updates we get, we'll be going into the other three and take talking about what elements I'd like to see from them. So let's finish on Clash and Go. Clash and Go by the same makers of Draconius Go, right? This was set in my mind to be a really good game. I thought this would be something that would, you know, really change the AR game up because it decided to work on two 
things instead of just the AR element. What it did is it combined the AR element and the Clash and almost Clash Royale. It was basically Clash Royale, as you can see. So you'd have your own base. So this was the strategy element and this was the AR element. So you were a ship and you could go out and um, find resources that you'd then be able to use to, to build. You could capture towers that would give you extra you know building efficiency and again they had that element of you know the pillars of the, the so like the treasure hunt which i was glad that they introduced the big problem with this game though it had no collectible element and so you weren't working towards anything it didn't feel like you were they had a ranking system you know they had clans within it and so if we go to, I remember, if we go to here, we can see trophies. So you were playing for, like to be first place, and you had clans as well that, you know, played for for top place. Ooh, Universe Pirates is what it used to be in. They've gone down. Um, so you played for trophies. The problem was the game was released and it didn't have enough player base, and so you were battling AI, and so that was broken from the start. Because you're just battling the same people again and again and again. I uh, apologize for not like you can't see the full. There you go. So this game flopped, massively flopped. I think in terms of what they were hoping for this to be. And I think one aspect of it is it did something that we've already done before. It wasn't unique. It was exactly the same as Clash Royale. And you know, Clash Royale is fun, but it requires a lot of you know playing the same buildings again, to playing the same battles to build resources. And it just got, frankly, boring. You know, it was really interesting. The first, you know, I played for like a month and it was really interesting the first month. But then once I've like reached my max level in terms of, you know, my, our clan's guaranteed to win. And once I battled the same thing a hundred times, I was just bored. And I was left thinking, what am I doing this for? Okay, I'm maybe like in the top clan of this. But what am I doing it for? And it had no collectible element. The AR element was there, but it was weak. And it meant that you didn't need to go out. You could literally win this game and be the best at it by sitting at home and just battling against people. PvP, all right, PvP improved, but it just didn't have that collectible element. And I think within that, that's one thing I think Wizards Unite is going to have to take into account. The collecting element is fun. Collecting all the creatures is going to be such a dream for me in terms of because like I'm a magic zoologist. Uh, if I was going to pick any profession or uh, I would be a magic zoologist, and I love the creatures of the Wizarding World. I loved watching Fantastic Beast film and seeing the new creatures come to life, and I think they've got to build on that. They can then add the magical artifacts element as well because you've got thousands, thousands probably that we don't know about, but like hundreds, you've got loads of magical artifacts within it, you know, time turners, snitches, brooms, within that, things that are collectible and people want, things that are rarer, things that are easy to find, things that hopefully are unlocked by, you know, going out and looking for cursed vaults and opening them by unlocking secrets, having, you know, secrets that puzzles that nobody can solve and you have to talk between each other in the community. So I hope it has that element. And I think that's what it needs to learn from this game is some feature like that is important. What I think it can learn from this game though is community. Community is a big factor within, you know, you know, every game being good. I think Pokemon Go has improved that ability by by, you know, community events, by, you know, it's held bigger events. It's I'm just gonna switch this to yeah I can't move it but sorry because it's not in uh, horizontal it's only vertical so you guys have only got a slight snippet that's meant to be the clan leaderboard basically but what it has in is it is you could communicate between each other so I could go to here and we have global chat which you can't see because it's just off <laughs> we have global chat I can move it over here ah, that's my that's my screen so we had global chat, which meant you could chat with your clan mates and discuss strategies and talk about, you know, what's good to use, what's not good to use. And 
that for me was brilliant. Pokemon Go doesn't have that. You can you can you know communicate via a gift. I'm sending you a gift. But you can't talk, which is annoying when it comes to trading because it's going to be like, well, how can I trade with you? And I don't know when you want to trade, what time of day you want to trade. And I'm going to most likely want to trade with regionals. Therefore, your time difference is going to be huge. So you might be asleep whilst I'm awake wanting to trade. So I think having that element, something where we can chat, it's a complex, probably quite hard to introduce in a game, I think. But if they put the time in and build it, I think that would be great. Another one that they could go with is clans. Clans is a popular feature within a lot of games. And I mean, it, it was good in this game. To a certain extent, I think its limitation is that once you have clans, you're a clan and other people are in your clan. And you do want to keep a game still very inclusive, like oh, you're all going to raid and you want to help each other out. Whereas in a clan, it becomes a little bit element of like, don't, you know, don't let, help that person because they'll be better than our clan then if they do that. And so I don't like that element of it. And I don't think it needs clans. I don't think, you know, whatever the team strategy is in terms of if it's like a Valor Mystic uh, Instinct or a Harry, Ron, Hermione, I don't think Pokemon Go has ever needed clans. And I don't think it does in this game. What I do want is a global chat, a local chat, a way to organize things with people within a, a region of distance. Because especially for our rural players, there could be Joe Bloggs, you know, 100 meters away from me who's playing and wants to go to a raid. But because he doesn't know I'm going to the raid as well, me and him are both like, well, we're not going to go to a raid because we won't be able to complete it. All it would take is for me to go, anybody want to do this in 10 minutes time? We can organize it and go there and meet to do these raids. So I think a global, local, distance rated chat would be a great feature to have in Harry Potter Wizards Unite and encourage a, a, a wizarding community that already communicates a lot through social media. So I think that's kind of all got to learn from it. It does have similar features to Draconius Go in terms of like maps and hunting and rewards, but I won't go into that too much because they're the kind of key features. I think summing up, learning, looking at Pokemon Go, Clash and Go, Draconius Go, I want to be able to collect beasts. So I want to be able to collect things and I want things to be rare and I want to go out and hunt. I want the game to be heavily loaded on the AR element and encourage you to walk. Whilst having a slight element of you can play on your own, but at home, but you have to go out to find means to be able to have time to do that. Because the game has to be loaded towards going outside, playing, because that's where the most fun is going to be had. And for me, I think that's where you're going to keep more players playing. Um, secondly, if we take from Pokemon Go, I think it needs to have quest. It needs to have a balanced reward system. That not that the the higher you get level, the less rewards you get. The higher that you get, the better the rewards, and keep that going. And potentially for those people who are player four, level forty, maybe have a prestige element like Call of Duty, where you can then you know start one, two, three, four, five, up to forty again, and go back to having those same rewards. I think that would encourage you further to knowing that there'd be something big rewards over that huge hill of 5 million experience from 39 to level 40. I think I want to see some element that, you know, does, I want to see that, that geocaching element that like you're going out on hunts. I want to see cursed vaults and hidden chambers and hidden puzzles within that. I want to see a global and local chat that you can communicate with other players, people playing the game within your area and globally as well. So if there are regionals that you can say, oh, well, do you want to trade this if there is going to be trading? I'm not sure if there should be trading within this, but I suppose you could do because, you know, on the black market, people do trade in dragon eggs and things like that. So, hey, they could introduce it in that way. Whatever they do, I think they need to make sure this game is unique different from all these games not just relying on what worked for them but something different chamber of secrets things like that please please hidden curse vaults i don't know let me know your thoughts on you know some of these games we'll be going into the other three uh mobile games or three or four 
in another video. Uh, so there's other features within that is, which have a very different take on the AR based games. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below on these games and what you would like to see. You know, if there are any little, you know, bits that you would really like to see that I haven't discussed, please let me know and I'll talk about them in future videos. That's all for this one. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. If you have, please hit the like button and hit subscribe if you want to keep up to date with future content. That's all from me. See you soon.